They moved stones heavier than trucks, across hundreds of miles, over hills, rivers, and valleys, without wheels, without iron, without writing, thousands of years before Rome, before pyramids rose in Egypt. Stonehenge appeared on the misty plains of southern England, a perfect astronomical calendar, aligned with the solstices, built with engineering precision, no one could explain. But who were they? For centuries, the identity of the builders remained buried beneath time, myth, and stone. Some believed they were druids, others swore they were giants or aliens, all theories, no proof. Then, from the soil, a bone. From that bone, DNA. Ancient, fragile, older than the pyramids. Scientists ran the analysis, expecting little. What they found changed history. The genetic code whispered secrets lost for 5,000 years, not only revealing who built Stonehenge, but where they came from, why they came, and what happened to them. Could the bloodline of Stonehenge still live among us today? The year is 3000 BCE. While much of the world still lived in scattered tribes, the windswept hills of Salisbury Plain echoed with the sound of hammers, stone against stone. Massive sarsen blocks, some weighing over 25 tons, were being dragged from 20 miles away. Even more mysterious were the blue stones, transported over 140 miles from the Preseli Hills in Wales, through mountains, rivers, and marshlands. No wheels, no beasts of burden, no roads, just human will and knowledge. From a civilization we didn't know existed. Stonehenge wasn't built all at once. It evolved over 1,500 years, suggesting a society that passed down knowledge for generations. But who were these people capable of such planning, such precision, such unity? They left no written records, no royal tombs, no monuments of conquest. Only this ring of stones, perfectly aligned with celestial movements, standing like sentinels of a forgotten age. Archaeologists were baffled. The mystery deepened as burial mounds nearby revealed human remains, but no clear origin. Their skulls, their tools, even their pottery, unlike any known British culture. So, where did they come from? It began with a grave. In 1919, workers excavating near Stonehenge uncovered a burial, one that didn't match the others. Among fragments of bone lay a dagger made of flint, finely crafted, far more intricate than typical Neolithic tools. But it wasn't until decades later, with the rise of ancient DNA technology, that this burial was revisited. In 2008, a new wave of archaeologists returned to the site, this time with something far more powerful than shovels, genetic sequencing equipment. They exhumed a set of bones from one of the oldest known graves, belonging to a man buried 5,000 years ago, just as Stonehenge was first being built. His remains were fragile, his teeth worn, but his bones preserved a secret no eye could see. Inside the porous chamber of a molar, scientists extracted mitochondrial DNA. It was intact, a miracle for a sample that ancient. They ran the sequence, expecting a local lineage. What they got instead didn't match anything native to ancient Britain. It was the first crack in the story we thought we knew. The DNA told a story buried for five millennia. As researchers compared the sequence to global databases, a pattern emerged. The genes didn't match the hunter-gatherers of ancient Britain. They matched people from Anatolia, modern-day Turkey. This wasn't migration. This was a movement of civilizations. To confirm, scientists expanded the study. Over 400 skeletal remains from across Neolithic Britain were analyzed. Bones from caves, burial mounds, and ceremonial sites. Again and again, the genetic markers pointed south and east. The data painted a stunning picture. Around 4000 BCE, 
a wave of farmers migrated from the Fertile Crescent through the Balkans across the European continent, finally reaching the shores of Britain. But how did these early farmers build Stonehenge? That answer came from another clue. Pottery fragments near the site, identical in design to those found in Brittany, France, and Iberia. These weren't isolated groups. They were part of an expansive culture with shared knowledge, moving westward like the tide. The builders of Stonehenge weren't native islanders. They were descendants of Anatolian migrants who carried farming, architecture, and astronomy across continents. But why build such a monument here? What drove them to this windswept plain? The breakthrough came from a comparison. Ancient DNA versus modern DNA. Scientists took genetic samples from today's British population, focusing on those living near Stonehenge. The results were clear and shocking. The genetic profile of Stonehenge's builders is nearly absent in modern Britons. Their bloodline didn't evolve into the Celtic or Anglo-Saxon populations that dominate Britain today. Instead, their closest modern relatives are found in the Mediterranean, from Sardinia, southern Italy, and parts of Greece. These were the descendants of the first great farmers who moved through Europe bringing knowledge of agriculture, astronomy, and monument building. Their DNA showed shared ancestry with people who constructed megalithic structures across Europe, from Karnak in France to Los Milares in Spain, and ultimately Stonehenge in England. Then came the second shock, the disappearance. Around 2500 BCE, the DNA of these Neolithic builders all but vanishes from British soil, replaced rapidly by a new group, the Bell Beaker people, who arrived from Central Europe carrying new genes, new tools, and a new culture. The builders of Stonehenge had not just been forgotten, they had been replaced. Picture this 6,000 years ago, a group of pioneering farmers sets out from the warm hills of Anatolia. Over generations, they move westward, through forests, across rivers, settling the fertile lands of Europe. They bring with them the secrets of agriculture, the art of stone carving, and a deep understanding of the stars. By the time they reach the windswept island of Britain, they are not conquerors. They are visionaries. They choose a place where the sun rises and sets in perfect alignment. They drag stones heavier than any beast could pull, shaping a monument unlike anything the world had ever seen. Stonehenge wasn't a tomb. It was a calendar, a temple, a cosmic machine. Built to track solstices, mark seasons, and perhaps connect the living with the dead but time was not on their side. By 2500 BCE, new groups begin to arrive. The Bell Beaker people, taller, stronger, armed with metal tools and new ways of life. With them comes a genetic shift so dramatic that 90% of the original population disappears within a few centuries. The Stonehenge builders vanish. Through conflict, disease, or assimilation, leaving behind only their stones and their secrets. What began as a symbol of unity became a silent monument to a people erased by time. Today, millions walk among the stones of Stonehenge, unaware that beneath their feet lies the DNA of a vanished people, not druids, not giants, but migrants from ancient Anatolia who crossed continents with nothing but vision tools of stone, and knowledge written in the stars. They built one of the world's most iconic monuments, not for glory or conquest, but for time, memory, and the cosmos. And yet, their story remained hidden for 5,000 years, until science cracked the code. The truth wasn't written on the stones. It was written in their bones. Now we know. Stonehenge is not just British. It's global, born of a migration that reshaped human history. The monument we see today 
is the echo of a world that no longer exists, but one that still speaks, if we know how to listen. So next time you see those stones, ask yourself, what other secrets does the earth still hide beneath our feet? If this journey into ancient DNA fascinated you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Because this is just the beginning. More mysteries await, just beneath the surface.